It's January 6, 2021, One. and it, it appears that the adversary has overthrown the United States of America. It appears. And so th this teaching was Context. brought to me before I knew of all these things that actually were actually happening today. And so this will be great history when the victory is over. Oh, funny guy. <laughs> yeah, I bless you. We have a very funny cameraman. Yeah. Uh, my name is Aaron Cunningham. I'll be doing a teaching tonight. And the, the, the teaching, um, I'm not going to title it because I really stay on script. It's who is this author? You know, I, I read about David Livingston and got to read about an extraordinary life. And somebody embellished and turned it into a story, kind of like we would do with a movie. And I knew it wasn't exact, but at the very end, uh, uh, the book was over. I'm not a reader, but I was like, it's over. Oh. You guys are readers, but I'm like, that's not normal for me. And at the back of the book, it says a little bit about the author. I went, oh, I get to read about this husband and wife, and okay, blah, blah. Well, tonight, we're going to be learning about this author, the author of his work. And, uh, I, and so, and before we, uh, and I guess before we go into manifestations, I wanted to kind of share something else that was really important, and this will be for all of us. George Mueller, incredible man of faith. The book is explained. He, uh, it was like 1,200 orphans were being fed daily. They were asking for money. Uh, probably even more than that at the end, but I'm not sure. <clears throat> but at the very, his very beginning, as he's becoming independent uh, of man, he's going to just teach the Word. Um, here on page 59 of this book, while at Sidmouth preaching in April 1833, believing sisters held in his presence a conversation about believers' baptism, which proved the which proved the suggestion of another important step in his life, which has a wider bearing than at first is apparent. So it's going to say they're talking about baptism. So I, he he's uh, I don't know if he's the, the the pastor yet or what is what his position is, but he's teaching. So these believers are talking, and as this, this conversation is going on, they naturally asked his opinion on the subject about which they were talking. And he replied that, having been baptized as a child, he saw no need of being baptized again. I was baptized as a kid. I don't, I don't see any reason. Right? Why did he think that? He was raised that way. He never... Never read what these women did. Being further asked... If he had ever prayerfully searched the word of Yahweh as to its testimony in this matter. Have you ever prayerfully searched the word of Yahweh concerning this matter? He frankly confessed he had not. So this guy, is, he, was, he was a real deal. And so, <laughs> then this is what the woman says next. Now he's a German in England. <coughs> And he's just going to preach the word. People don't like it. He's, they wanted an orator. God! God! And here's these guys, and he's not. He's German. He, this is a second language. He's just going to do the word. And, uh, but anyway, this woman, after he, he had not ever prayerfully considered this, searched the scriptures, at once with unmistakably plainness of speech and with rare fidelity, one of these sisters in Christ promptly said, I entreat you then never again to speak any more about it till you have done so. Until you have prayerfully searched the scriptures to come to to get your conclusion or whatever it is, don't teach it. Does that make sense? Yeah. What what did he do? Well it's neat. As he was doing this, I was like, I wonder how many subjects I already have a conclusion, I know what I believe, but I've have, have ever tried to disprove what I believe? Mm -hmm. Or do you only go to the word to prove what you believe? So this guy, I'm not backing down from a challenge. He starts looking at it. You, you turn the next page. The conviction compelled action where for in him there was no spirit of compromise and he was a court, he was baptized. He got done reading. He goes, this is somebody, the eunuch did this. It was a decision that somebody made, not an infant. So they're baptizing infants so they don't go to hell. He was raised this way. He works for people and he's teaching the way they're, they're and then he goes and searches the scriptures and he changes his mind. What does he do? Does he preach? He gets baptized. 
When we're searching the scriptures on any subject, and this is very important for everybody, including myself, obviously, when somebody brings something up, even if you know the answer, you could be helping the person and say, what is the context of this scripture? What do you mean? What's the context? For instance, a rich man and Lazarus. There's a parable about a rich man goes to not Hades, but, or not Gehenna, but Hades. He's being tormented. The poor beggar goes to Abraham's bosom. And people will teach this is hell. This man, you go. So what is it? What, what is it? What is the conclusion of this? What is the conclusion or the context? They go, what do you mean? It means hell exists. You go, so is the conclusion beggars go to heaven, and if you don't share, you go to hell? No! And that's not the conclusion, but that's where they're, they're leading. And then you go read the end of the conclusion of this parable. What's the end of the what is the conclusion to the parable? Now, the beginning of it was to the Pharisees who were lovers of money. Okay. And the ending of it is because it, it, they, they said, uh, Abraham, Abraham, if, they, if, if I can talk to one of my brothers, they can, you know, then they can save them from going here. And then the conclusion was that if a man was, uh, was raised from the dead, they would still not believe. If they do not believe Moses and the law, they would not believe if one was raised from the dead. So that's the conclusion. What's the point? So what the conclusion of any argument or teaching is the point. Yeah. What's the point of that parable? So you can help somebody, not to, like, like Melania's teaching, not to be, think yourself more uppity. What is, what is the context of that scripture? You say that a lot. And say it in a nice way. They go, I have no idea. You don't know the context of it? No. I, I, I entreat you to search the scriptures. And you can go also... Okay, absent from the body is present with the Lord. You can go, okay, how many times did it say that in the Word? And it's way back here. Was Moses ever taught this? Did, it was, did King David taught this? No, it's way back here. There's 4,000 years people were never taught this, this foundational doctrine. Does that make sense? And they go, was Adam and Eve taught that? No. And you can go, does it say that? Yes. Matthew 4, 6, 4, 6, excuse me, the, the adversary said, it is written, cast thyself down, according to Psalms uh, 91. What did, what did he say? It is also written. So just because somebody quotes a scripture and says something, what is the context? What's the conclusion of the context? Is this the only place that's written this? Are there, are there like 15 or 20 same scriptures here? You could probably deliver a minister or a pastor or somebody going into seminary going, how many places does it say that? None. You can't be baptized unless you're in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. How many times does it say that? One. How many times was it done? None. Okay. And then what we're able to do is help people that are building foundations on sand. It's not even sand. Um, but uh, anyways, what's the conclusion? That now, uh, we're going to go ahead and hear from our Father. So if somebody's going to be listening to this years from now or whatever, Speaking in tongues. People have their opinion. Have you ever looked at the scriptures to come up with this conclusion? Because do you know your opinion could be offending and mocking the author, your owner? You're mocking him? Wow. Uh, you know, okay, how about tongues and interpretation? How about prophecy? Went out with the apostles. Does this say that? And then, then what we're able to do is, in a, in, a, in a nice way, say, how do you get your con con conclusion on these things? Uh, so we're going to, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we are going to be obedient. And how many groups, I don't know of any other group, that will sit and, and do tongues with interpretation and prophecy like, like we do, it's specifically with the kids. That is a privilege. Well, nobody else does it. Yeah! How many people are taken to the Mount of Transfiguration? Three. Where's everybody else? It's a heart, heart issue, yeah. believing issue, whatever. Who cares? But we get, the, we get a step a little closer. So go ahead. Well, Father, we thank you for these words. Well, thank you for our hearts, circumcising our hearts. And before, now, Father, thank you for working through me, working through my tongue, working through my mouth to, to deliver a message that you desire to bless your children here that will honor you and your son. We thank you 
uh, for our hearts being humble, we circumcise those and get them ready. We can make room. It's just as if the president was coming here. We'd clean the house and we'd make sure there's a nice place to sit. The best china out. Thank you for helping us do that with our heart before we hear from you. So if somebody like to do tongues and interpretation or prophesy, please do. Erminia to sakan yaro kato pi meto sandereza. Meto sandereza me pikalaya no shikito pasa. Mon borokoto van pere kalaya sign gyanako. As the rain falls and the sun shines and the darkness comes at the end of the day, this is what I want you to see. Each day is an individual day. Each day has a purpose. Each day in your life, you should be doing something that will improve your stand on my word. As you improve yourself by wearing that armor that I've made given so freely to you, you will be able to stand against the wiles of the wicked one. Believe me, my children, when I say that you have the strength to do it. Of your prophecy, behold, you are my sons and my daughters, in whom I am endowed with great ability and great privilege to live at this time and in this age and in this place. So I expect you to stand up on high, proclaim who I am in your lives and in other people's lives, that you can be an ambassador as I have crowned you through my son. Word of prophecy. <clears throat> Prepare yourselves so that you may present. Uh, knowing that that I show it as a uh, as a machine that that all things have to work be working together and to 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 keep these things maintained as a as you would your vehicle or your anything that needs maintenance or upkeep to be doing these things and to be prepared and to be ready and to be standing in in position that you may know my words that you may know your authority and that you may stand and deliver. Do not be afraid to speak up. And stand out, and uh, let me work through you, my children, and um, just speak out. Let me speak through you. Amen. Be strong and bold, <clears throat> my children, for I've called you to be so at this time. And you must walk forward. I know you're waiting for me, but we are walking together. So I will not be walking ahead of you. I will be walking alongside you. So just start moving forward with me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, guys. George Mueller's not the teaching tonight, but <clears throat> kind of going out. I was hoping to kind of prepare a room for our heart, not just going through the scriptures. Uh, the guy, he was the real deal. And, and um, he changed so many generations of lawyers and judges and doctors and people that would have been discarded on the street. It wasn't his choice either. He didn't want to go to England. It wasn't necessarily his desire, but Yahweh was working. And he had, a, he had a desire going, of course Yahweh will meet all my needs. People say that. <laughs> I was thinking this morning, why does he always ask me to do something I don't want to do? <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. Sometimes we don't want, we don't want to ask. Here I am. I'll get to that in a little bit. I have a pretty good idea. Maybe it's because it's, it, it, I don't know. But, but here's what I do know. Whenever we're on the border is to confront ourselves to say, whatever he has is better than anything I could ever imagine. Yeah. George Mueller, is, is, is this guy was starting off, he starts teaching the word, he's not gonna teach what they wanna hear, and then all of a sudden he, he gets separated, separated. He starts reading the word. And here's a minister, they didn't read the word. People don't read the word today. They'll read anything but the word. Commentary, commentaries, this and this and that. He, it was the same problem back then. And that's why people weren't successful in their lives. Now, they could be successful in their own mind, King Saul was successful as he was going crazy. Did King Saul have money? Yeah. Did he have a house? Mm -hmm. How about Solomon with his foreign wives? Was he successful to Satan? Absolutely. Where's his reward? Your life does not belong to you. And Yahweh is looking at each one of us going, you're wasting my life. What is your purpose of your life? Are you fulfilling it each day? And here was George Mueller. He's going to people just replace it with the word. Um, replace, uh, replace... Uh, all your free time and then a, a guy who never read through the word before he started reading four times a year how many sitcoms are you watching how, many, how much time is on Facebook how many other novels are you reading how much time oh I'll do anything for you except obey 
<laughs> but anyways, uh, the neat thing with this, even the teaching, uh, is what bef this is the very beginning of like a man who did mighty works, and we're reading about these mighty works. I can't wait to see what his, what his real works were, the spiritual one, and the rewards that he's going to get. He made it, and so can we if we let go of things and start going. Quit being as, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, and comparing ourselves with ourselves and going, no, what do you want me to do? But before you do a teaching, he goes, don't do a teaching unless you go talk to your boss. What does he want to talk about? And they, then he talked about waiting and waiting and waiting. He goes, how can you, a waiter, and I was using his waiter, uh, the Hebrew word is not necessarily this term. But a waiter waits on somebody, what do you want? I'm, I'm here again, checking in to see what they want. He's talking about that's what he would do with Yahweh. What do you need? How many times a day are you checking in? Not with your problems. Yeah. Hey, I got another complaint. Mm -hmm. We got some time to know about, hey, how can I help you? What would you like? And how do you do that? Well, each one of us, he's got a plan to say, separate the garbage, all the stuff that's coming in here. Replace it and worry for nothing. Okay. Um, and George, oh, and then this teaching tonight, you guys, do you know how much information that I've been, you guys, you don't know. But for like the last four days, I asked Yahweh, I said, please rock my world. Here's this word, this word. I've been compiling stacks of paper. I was so excited about my teaching today. And I got ready to do the teaching today. It was like, just push all that to the side. <gasps> <Don't> this, <laughs> <you don't really laughs> no, I can't push it to the side because I want to talk about something different. This is the first thing in the morning. I hadn't plugged in today. I didn't know what was going on today. He goes, I want to talk about something different. Okay. <laughs> But you know what? All of this is like, but is it going to be worth it? Yes. Can you imagine King David going to kill Goliath? Are you really going to do this? Well, what a way to go out, right? <laughs> you give yourself a pep talk and go, what, what if everybody leaves you? Yeah, if they leave you, but if Yahweh's there, who cares? Yeah. Who cares? I turn to Isaiah chapter 11. About the author. Yeah. Not about your circumstance. Not about your situation. Not about how long you've been waiting for your desire or your need. Or I've been so faithful and I haven't got what I want. No, not about you. Yeah, uh, Toby, Toby Keith. I want to talk about me. Yeah. He's the creator of the universe. What has he given us? He's given us everlasting life. His son hung on a cross. You don't want to know about him? Well, I guess so. And so this, this, so this is, let's just talk about the author. And as we learn about the author, we will have more reverence about what the author wrote about you and about me. And with all of us, we're never done. He's never done with us. All of us is grow up. Mm -hmm. You got more in the tank. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. You have no idea how far along the Apostle Paul was, or this guy was, or that guy was. He goes, quick, compare yourself, compare yourself with my son. Oh, man, I got a lot of work. That's the idea. Because you got one life. And this whole life is preparing you for the next life. And you'll be rewarded. And when you do your job, you're actually helping other people do their job. Yeah. Me taking care of my rebellious son who doesn't want to, Yahweh's word anymore, how do I take care of him? I feed his sheep. I do his teaching. That's how you take care of your kids. That's how you take care of your bills. What's he asking you to do? Uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 15. So I, I saw Melania turn because that's a sensitive subject. All of us have to go, it's not a sensitive subject. Because that's exactly what the adversary wants. Because if he can get one of your family members, he's got the whole family. Yeah. So no, my family is those who do my father's will. You can attack my family. It's not getting me the adversary. Because if the adversary thinks all I got to do is get Caden, and look what it's done to Melania. That's when you go, oh no. Oh no. I'm going to burn even brighter for Yahweh. Because who is my family? All of us. And then if it's a father or me or anybody else, you say, no, you're not my family. Yahweh's my family. Um, 15 verse, uh, let's see here. Chapter 11, 15. Okay, this was new to me. We're in Ishaya, the cameraman's favorite book. And Yahweh will devote to destruction the gulf of the Egyptian sea. Little footnote here. Do you know how you say this word Egyptian here? Well, David is David. Moshe is Moses, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mitzrayim. Sounds a lot like Egyptian, doesn't it? <laughs> Mitzrayim. Like, what is this? Okay. Anyways, this is talking about when the sheriff comes back into town. And yeah, and that is Strong's number H4714. Mitzrayim. That's for Egyptian. See, I don't know if that's all Egyptian. It could be different words. What verse you went to? Chapter 15. 15 and yeah. Yahweh will devote to destruction the gulf of the Egyptian sea and will brandish it. There? 11 15. 11 15. I was a. Oh, 11 15. Sorry. You're all right. I got to show the axis. <coughs> 11 15. Page 659. Mm -hmm. Are you nope. sure? No, it's right there. It's, it's right here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So hopefully. <clears throat> okay, you ready to read? <laughs> And Yahweh will devote to destruction the gulf of the Egyptian sea. What? Mm. The gulf? Look at footnote A. Tongue. What's it say? Tongue. The gulf is the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And will brandish his hand against the river, the Euphrates, and the full force of his footnote, Ruah. Mm. And will smite it. What's he talking about smiting? The tongue. Water. 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 <laughs> And will smite it in the seven streams and cause a marching through in sandals. So shall there be a highway for the remnant of his people who shall be left out of Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land. When Yahweh shows up, the water moves. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. I've heard my dad say this word a couple of times. I don't think he, he, he's thinking it. Move. Move is like, <laughs> move. When Yahweh comes to town, move. They, well, I watch the princess bride, and here's the, here's the giant. And they, he's got his cloak, and he's, he's got this cloak, and it's on fire, and these people in front of the gate. And he, he's, he's under the giant. He's 7'5 or something, 500 pounds. And in the part of the movie, he says, move. And guess what the guy did? <laughs> when Yahweh says move, what do these waters do? They spit. Yeah. They get the heck out of the way. So this is the author. I gotta keep going. Okay, go ahead. I just have to call that. Okay. Uh, uh, Psalm 77. Not excuse me. So I was reading. I go. That's what my dad says. My dad goes move, move. <laughs> so 569. Now this is a good one. This one, this one gave me goosebumps. Reading about the author, when his kids, and this is that's going to be, I believe, as far as I know, that's going to be after the resurrection in the thousand-year kingdom. Something's going to happen. It's, it's going to be like with Egypt. Uh, uh, Psalm seventy-seven, verse sixteen. Now this is going to be talking about the Red Sea. So what we just read was like another occurrence of the Red Sea is when it appears. This is going to be the Red Sea being divided. The water saw the O Elohim. What saw him? The waters. And how many times did Yahweh write this? Every word in there is for a reason. The waters saw thee, O, Yah, o Elohim. The waters saw thee. How many times? Twice. Twice. They were in birth throes. What was in birth throes? The waters. The waters. What's just, well, what's that word? The good old Rod's I mean, he'll put words there so you go, I gotta take a look at this. Strong's number 23, verse 42. Right, Strong's number H2342. This word, this is a theological word book in the Old Testament, is to twist or whirl or dance or writhe in pain. Mm. You ever seen an animal hit by a car? Yeah. 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 A couple. You ever seen that? An animal dying, we go hunting, gotta put it to sleep. That is this word here. Stirring? Age 23. So the birth throws. So the waters are watching Elohim. The waters see saw thee. And then what happens to the waters? Yeah. <laughs> Yea, the resounding deeps were stirred. The clouds poured down waters. 
the skies uttered a voice. <coughs> Yea, thine arrows flew hither and thither. The voice of thunder was in the whirlwind. The lightnings illuminated the world. The earth trembled and quaked. In the sea was thy way, and the path in the mighty waters, and thy footprints could not be known. Thou didst lead like a flock, <coughs> thy people by the hand of Moses. When Yahweh says move, there's a time that Yahweh is very polite. Moses take <coughs> off the shoes. But in Exodus 14, it says, Moses, move the water. Move it. And there's times that Yahweh is going to be really angry. And the author is going to say, move. But what's neat about this, when Yahweh, I had down here, is that here, Yahweh is going, the water is going, holy moly, the boss is coming. What does that mean? I don't know. But Yahweh wrote this. What is what, the boss is coming? The water started trembling. Bird pain's going. He's coming. He's coming. And Yahweh says, "Move." You know what that reminded me of? Luke chapter four, verse thirty. I put a footnote there. I remember. <laughs> I can imagine your, my brother Israel and his kids. Maybe one of the kids is mouthing off because they think they're all home alone. Blah, 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 blah. And dad's at home and everybody else knows he's home. Except for the one mouthing off. Blah, 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 blah. And everybody's like. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the Democrat Party. That's Islam. Going to go, you... <laughs> Maybe you do know what you're doing, but you're, you're looking and going, good luck. Good luck with that one. Verse 30, 28. Luke 4, verse 28. Okay? You there? I'll just highlight your, I'll highlight your Bible next time so you know it. I'm, I'm just okay. kidding. And all were filled with wrath in a synagogue and as they heard these things. And rising up, they thrust him forth outside the city and led him as far as a brow of the hill on which their, their city was built so that they might throw down headlong. They're going to kill Jesus, Yehoshua Mashiach, Jesus Christ, for being obedient. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. I used to think he slipped through, sliding through. And then when I'm reading about what his father did, to the Red Sea. You ever seen a protester try to stop a truck? Yes. There's righteous anger, and I bet you Jesus Christ just walked right through them, and they're just maybe stepping on them, whatever. <laughs> Gonna go, and there's just a whole other way. He turns and goes, move, move, and gonna go, okay. Uh, turn to Psalm 106. Dad, would you read 8 through 10, please? Yet he saved them for the sake of his name, to make known his mighty power. So he rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up, and he led them through deeps as pasture land, and saved them from the hand of one full of hatred, and redeemed them out of the heart <coughs> of the foe. Yeah. So the waters covered their adversaries, not one of them among them was left. They believed, therefore, you know, and they sang praises. Uh, hand of one full of hatred. Does that remind yeah. you of the Democrat Party right now? <laughs> this, yep. the, the, how evil them in Iran and in China. And here they are. Are you doing your job in Christ? <coughs> I am. Mm -hmm. I, and I know you are. We're with him. <laughs> We're with that guy. Yeah. The rest of you, the hand of one full of, here's this hatred. You are Trump hat all the rest of this stuff. People hating Donald Trump. It's not Donald Trump. No, this is, I'm going to digress for just a second. Skip, skip to verse 17 about this author. When he says move, it moves. It splits. The water quakes and trembles in like birth pain, freaking out. Uh, 
And in verse 17, what does it say there? The, the earth opened and engulfed Dathan and covered up the assembly of Ab Abiram. Then was kindled a, kindled a fire in the assembly, a flame consuming the lawless ones. See, this, is our, this is the author of the book. Swallowed them, burned them, and here this is. And guess what? We're with him. We're with that guy. Are you doing your job? Yeah. Are you being obedient? Yeah. All right. Uh, now, all of that, now we're going to turn to the book of, it's not Job. I just learned how to say this. Yeah. I thought it would have been Job too. Uh, t turn to Job 38. <laughs> Job is right before Psalms. <coughs> 525. Yeah. Bad. I don't ever Job is a Hebrew word. Yeah, the, the, the poetry in Job is incredible. You want to read about stars, you want to read about incredible things. So, as far as we know, the book of Job is one big parable. Okay. This chapter? 38. 38. And, and Job is Eyav. Eyov. 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 Can you spell it? <coughs> no, I cannot. Um, I, I just uh, I, I pronounce it phonetically. If I spelled it, it wouldn't. That was Hebrew. But now, here's a chapter about the author of the book. And what we're going to do is we're just going to read one chapter about him. and it, Who is he? And so, the context of this is a righteous man named Eov. 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 Yahweh is going to respond to him. You know, if, if our heart's right, you know, some of the biggest breakthroughs in my life is when I vent, respectfully vented to Yahweh. I'm sick and tired. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. I, can't, I don't understand it. And if my heart was right and then I waited, guess who showed up? Come on, get up. And he fixes it. But he's waiting for us, you know. It's like, it's like a relationship. What do you want to talk about? Let me talk about it. And so then here is the author is going to respond to Job. Why? What's happening in Job? Don't necessarily know. What's happening in your life? Are you overwhelmed? Are you surrounded? Is the end of the world near? Is it hopeless? You want to quit? Are we exhausting? I don't know. <coughs> Verse 1. Then Yahweh responded to Yahweh out of the storm and said... <coughs> Who is it that darkened counsel by words or without knowledge? Mom, I think you might do a better job of reading this. Almost, most of these things are questions. Would, would you, or should I read it? What? Verse 3? Well, I'm going to read the whole chapter. Oh. I, I, I can read it. I just get a little carried away. Verse 3. Gird, I pray thee, like a strong man, thy loins, that I may ask thee and inform thou me. Pull up your pants! Tell me, who does this? And Yahweh's going to talk to Job. He's going to talk to you and talk to me. Are you stressed out? Are you worried? You know, we could be angering our Creator. Be anxious for nothing. Verse 4. Where was thou when I founded the earth? Tell if thou knowest understanding. Who set the measurements there, thereof if thou knowest? Or who stretched out over it a line? It's not about the earth. Wherefore, whereon were the pedestals therefore sunk? The pedestals for the earth. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy. So I put a footnote here to say this is Genesis 1.1. You need to put a footnote. You want to know what happened on Genesis 1.1? Yahweh tells us in Job 38. This is like a whole movie you could do right here. He talks about it. He puts a pedestal. And what is all the sons of Elohim? What's the son of Elohim? It's going to be the angels. What do they do? The morning stars sang together and the sons of Elohim shouted for joy. Mm -hmm. Who shut in the double doors? The sea. What's the double doors? Footnote eight. The banks. Oh, man. Double doors. When bursting out of the womb, it came forth. The sea, the sea came out of a womb. There were double doors that opened the womb and the sea came forth. When I put a cloud as a garment thereof, and a thick cloud as a swallowing band thereof, I break off for it a boundary and fixed a bar and double doors. There's double doors again. They're like French doors. 
and said, Here too shalt thou come, and no further. And here shalt thou set a limit to the majesty of thy waves, waves, question mark. Since thy days began, hast thou commanded the morning? Have you ever commanded the morning? Have you? I haven't. Or cause the dawn to know its place? That it might lay hold of the wings of the earth, and the lawless be shaken out of it. Out of it? Question mark. It transformeth itself like a clay of a, of a seal, so that the things stand forth like one array. Their light may be withdrawn from the lawless, and the lofty arm be shriveled. Shivered. Sh uh, shivered. Okay, excuse me. Hast thou entered as far as the springs of the sea? You've been to the bottom of the sea before, Job? Uh, nope. Haven't been down there either. <laughs> or... Through the secret recesses of the resounding deep, hast thou wandered? Have you ever been to the bottom of the ocean, Isaiah? No, no me neither. Guess who has? Yeah. The one that's telling you to fear not. Mm. Be anxious for nothing. Let me see, where did I stop? 17. Thank you. <laughs> Have the gates of death been di disclosed to thee? And the gates of the death shade couldst thou descry? Hast thou well considered even the breadths of the earth? Do you know how long the earth is? Tell if thou knowest all. <laughs> Here's y'all going into a monologue. Isn't that great? <laughs> where then is the way the light shall abide? So where's, where's the light? Where does light abide? And the darkness, where then is its place? Think about Yahweh in like a workshop. Darkness goes here, light goes over here. That thou mayest conduct it into the bound thereof. Thou mayest perceive the past in thy house. Thou knowest then, hast thou been born? And in number, thy days are many. Hast thou entered into the treasuries of snow? The treasuries of hail, couldst thou see? Can you see where all the hail comes from? Or the snow? I'm thinking of the, the polar caps. Maybe, as to our knowing. Which, I love this next part. Which I, what, it, what is the treasuries of snow and hell for? Which I have reserved for a time of distress for the day of conflict of war. Footnote, Joshua 10 and 11. Joshua 10 and 11, when Jehoshua said, Sun, be still, and moon over echelon, guess he joined in throwing rocks. Mm -hmm. Yahweh, he's got a whole drawer full of these things. This is where he keeps them. Then where then is the way of lightning is parted? Uh, the, the east wind spreadeth itself abroad over the earth. Who hath cloven the torrent a channel, or a way for lightning of thunders, to give rain over the no man's land? Think about him. Wa uh, I was thinking about him watering the Sahara or the uh, Kalahari or whatever deserts here he is planting and watering. I think, I think about Tim taking care of his property. You know, he's taking care of stuff. And here's Yahweh, the desert where no son of earth is. I, I didn't know no man's land was in there. Verse 27, why? To satisfy the wild and the wilderness. <coughs> to cause a spring forth the meadow of the young grass. Who's in charge of watering all the plants? Dad was brought up, he says, Strums pointed out that man could not survive without grass or trees. Because without grass, we don't have livestock. And, and who plants the grass? <coughs> Yahweh does. And all these trees, Yahweh does. And here, here's Yahweh's watering all this. <coughs> Verse 20, it hath the rain of Father... Or who hath begotten the drops of dew? Out of whose womb came forth the ice? Man, that's a cold woman. And the hoarfrost of the heavens. Who hath given it birth? Like a stone are the waters congealed, and the face of the roaring deep becometh firm. Can thou bind the fetters of Pleiades? Ooh, these are the constellations that we discussed. Pleiades is seven sisters. It's a group of seven stars right behind what we call Taurus. Or the bands of Orion, that's also called the cluster. See, Orion's belt has got a name. It's Kassil, and Pleiades is Kima. Kima is specifically Pleiades. Kassil is, uh, uh, is specifically, or it's, it's Orion or all, any big constellation. But you guys, can you envision? Okay, I got to see, I take a picture of, of Orion, Kassil last night. So he's talking about it. So what? What's he going to say about it? 
Can thou bring forth the sign of the zodiac each in its season? Or the bear and her young? So that's another uh, constellation. Canst thou lead Israel right off the Big Dipper? Knowest thou the statues of heaven? Let me see here. I missed something. Oh, in verse 31. Canst thou bind the fetters of Pleiades or the bands of Orion? Or loosen? What's keeping all those constellations in place? He's holding things in place. He's talking about bands holding these things together. Invisible things holding stuff. He talked about a pedestal. All right, there's no pedestal. We've been to, we've been to the moon. We've seen this earth. We don't see any pedestals. And he's like, are you kidding me? These guys, how much unbelief do you have? If I said there's pedestals, there's pedestals. It must be invisible. But he's saying there's bands holding the constellations. Now who's holding the constellations? Is it you? Is it the Democrats? No. Nope. It's their enemy. Uh, verse 33, Knowest thou the statues of heaven? Or didst thou appoint his dominion over the earth? Canst thou lift up to the thick cloud thy voice, and the overflow of waters cover thee? Think about this. I never thought it before I read this. Canst thou send forth lightning? Can you? I don't know. Because if we can speak the storms the way Jesus Christ is, then I don't know. But here's Yahweh said lightning. And it, it could have been that this would have been let fire come down and consume you in your 50. I never thought about that before, but maybe we can. Maybe that is Mark 11, 23. Somebody's coming to get you. Lightning, strike that charging bull or whatever, you know, elephant. Uh, so that, uh, canst thou send forth the lightning so that they go and say to thee, behold us. Who hath put the, into cloud form wisdom? Or who hath given to the... Meteor. Meteor. Is that an unusual word? Meteor? Footnote. This word is used one time in Yahweh's word. And if you would read in almost other, other translations, they're going to translate this special word that's used one time into heart. It's not heart. And it's a shave or shavi. It's usages once. Uh, it, and it's a celestial appearance or phenomenon. Good old Rother and put a word there so we knew it was a code. And they go, here it is. It's not a heart. A celestial thing. Canst thou count the thin clouds in wisdom? And the bottles of heavens canst thou empty out? All these thunderstorms. When the dust is cast into a clod and the lumps are bound together, will thou hunt for the lioness prey? You guys got to feed your dog, right? Is that a lot of work? Well, there's a lot of lions that need to be fed. You want to feed them? <laughs> I'll toss them something. I, I, I can't handle that. No, you can't handle it. But Yahweh is saying, I can handle it. You do your job, I'll do my job. You fear not, and Yahweh will do it. You have peace. And rejoice and rejoice again, and then Yahweh will do his job. Let's see here. Uh, wilt thou hunt for the lioness prey, or the craving of the strong lion will thou satisfy? I'm just thinking about taking care of a zoo. When they settle down in dens, abide in a covert for lying in wait, who prepare for the ravens his nourishment? When his young ones unto El cry out, they wander a lack of food, and he keeps going. Well, we're going to stop there. Hmm. That's the author who's telling you to be anxious for nothing. That who's telling you to prophesy, to obey, to do whatever he's telling you to do. Go back and look at him and take some time to go lay in your back, your backyards, and look at the stars and just go, do you know anything about the stars? I didn't until I, I, I believe he told me to do a teaching. Now I'm going through, i I got to start learning some of this. Why? It's his work. Do you have trophies at your house? Does it bless you if people ask you about your trophies? You know, look, you know how much energy he's doing with these stars? You go out there, look at this stuff. And we set ourselves aside. We turn to uh, Philippians 4.4. 4. Uh, but that's the end of the author. Now, what's he telling you and I to do? And I didn't know what was going to happen today. I had no idea. In fact, Yahweh told me, don't go into Facebook and don't talk to anybody. Okay. <laughs> Actually, somebody could probably recite this. Does anybody know it all? 4427? 
Okay. Rejoice in Yahweh always. And again I say rejoice. Let thou consider this. Let, let thou let consider us be known unto all men, for Yahweh is near. For nothing be anxious, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your petitions be made known unto Yahweh. And the peace of Yahweh, which rises above every mind, shall guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Yahweh. So, so how do we yeah. go forth through that? That's great. That, excellent. And I, I got to give Dad a prophecy at the, at the office, and Yahweh was communicating about him. Um, there's a line, like you can show here, like show the floor. <clears throat> Here's peace. We, we, that's a stepping in the world, but we don't abide there. We, we, we got to be engaged. We have to do our job. We have to, it, says, it says rebuke, encourage, exhort, correct people, fight the good fight of faith, but we don't live there. Yeah. We're engaged. We stay over here. And as soon as I started getting shaky or my, with myself, my heart rate starts going up, or, if I, or if, I, if I have a tendency to not want to stop talking, I have to finish this, I know that I am now on the other side. And I, I'm, I'm engaged. So that was me personally. Turn to, uh, turn to now this is going to be us. Um, Psalms 1. So how do we do it? He didn't say it's easy. But, but it's a lot harder if you forget who the author is and who you belong to. You know, people would go to war with David and go, as long as we were David, we'll go. We'll be fine. As long as we got David, well, we got somebody better than David. Yeah. And we don't have to go to David. Yahweh rebuked me. You know, I'm reading these things, and I was having legal problems. A bunch of, all of us have injustices that happen to us. You know one thing that will probably encourage more injustices? If the God of this age and this world knows that it really affects you. Yeah. Oh, wow! That really got him! Tim was in the military. I've never been in the military, but I know when I played football, if you had a nickname that you didn't want anybody to know that you didn't like... You made sure they said it. You didn't say anything about it. If they make fun of your mom, you don't say anything about it. Because, oh, that really affected it. It encourages them. Um, <clears throat> Psalm 1-1. It's a really short one. And I'm, I'm memorizing this. Dad, Dad asked uh, us to memorize a scripture for Father's Day. Oh, God. How happy the man who have not... No, I was, was going to recite it. How happy the man not walked in the counsel of the lawless, and the way of the sinners not stood, and the seed of the scoffers not sat. But the law of Yahweh is his delight, and in his law he doth talk to himself day and night. So doth he become like a tree planted by streams. I'm, I'm trying to read it, not read it. I'll, 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 I'll recite it. How happy the man hath not walked in the counsel of the lawless, and the way of the sinner hath not stood, and the seed of the scoffer hath not sat, but in the law of Yahweh is the delight. And in his law he does speak to himself day and night. So doth he become like a tree planted by streams of water. Not so the lawless, but his chaff, which is driven about by the wind. For this cause Yahweh shall... Well, what's the next part? I, I ran out. Five. Five. For this cause shall the laws not stand the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For Yahweh doth acknowledge the way of the righteous, but the way of the law shall vanish. Are you guys righteous? Mm -hmm. I'm righteous. I have the righteousness. We're with him. The rest of these things we can step back. And now that we got our peace back, guess what he's got? He's got communion. He's got communication. How important is it to have communion? When the whole whole world's going nuts and nobody's picking up their phone. Would somebody pick up their phone? You don't understand how bad it is. And they, and they forgot about my resume. I mean, forgot about my son's resume because we got a pretty good resume. Why? Well, you don't understand how bad it is. The Philistines are attacking. We are the leaders. We are telios. We are the we we separate ourselves not because we want to be separated from other people, but because we want to become more Christ-like. We have to overflow peace, confidence. And faith. And what does that do to our adversaries when we don't wave? Holy cow! You see people running around stuff like that. It's like it's like a it's like a like a shark price uh, smelling blood. But that is our author, and I, and I put a footnote. Genesis one one. Go right over here and just read some of Job. You're gonna go, man. You could do a whole movie on Genesis one one. You wanna know what happened? Job got something really cool. I think after one of these times, Yahweh comes into Job. The dad said this. He goes, 
<laughs> Joel covers his mouth. <laughs> I can't say anything. What am I going to say to that? Well, what are you going to say? And then, what's important with all of this, Colossians 3.15. Does anybody know that one? Memorized? Go ahead. Okay, three, uh, for, and let the peace of Christ act as umpire in your heart, to which you are called in one body, and be thankful. Be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, with gratitude, raising psalms with your heart under Yahweh. 16. Amen. Excellent. So how's your peace? You're going to go, man. So even today, and I don't necessarily know all the stuff that happened today, but as I was, I was preparing the teachings and stuff, I had things to do, and he goes, don't. No, I got some things to do, don't. And then I, I got then I, I got a little glimpse, and guess what happened to my peace? Yeah. I got, I got infected with unbelief. He goes, it, it, with me today, because your job is to give faith in me. And, and so he goes, you got to stay separate. And that's all of us. And we, when we have that peace, we go, I don't make any decisions out of fear. I'm not a punk. You gonna try to scare me into making a mistake? No, that doesn't happen that way. No, I'm gonna go get peaceful. I'm gonna go check in with the boss and your landlord. What's up? Oh yeah, I got. I better sing you a song or something. I better take take my mind off this. I'll sing him a song. We'll talk about your trees. We're gonna talk about your dirt. We're gonna talk about anything else. And then he goes, "Okay, what's the problem?" <laughs> the Philistines are attacking again. He goes, "Oh, come up here, Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you that we know the end of the book." We thank you that your son and you have done so, you, you've been so patient with us. Thank you for encouraging us and taking the time to speak to us. I was reading about David Livingston. And he had, my heart broke because it, his life wasn't in his children's life. But you are in our life every day that we seek you and we open our ear. I thank you for helping us open our ear to hear from you, that we settle down and we check in with you more. Because we know that victory is inevitable when we have the creator of the universe on our side. And he's on our side because he gave his son. And we choose to obey and be like that tree planted by living water. We will blossom because you don't lie. Do not be fearful of anything. But let your roots and shoot your roots down deep. Become immovable in my word and who I am. Do not focus on the circumstance in the situation. But disengage and focus on the solution to every problem. That's me. Understand this. The bigger the problem there is, the bigger the victory your God and your Savior get. Egypt and the gods of Egypt were huge. And Yahweh bragged about them for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. He shook them off into the sea, so he shaked these. Amen. Amen.